I'm going to do a uh, real quick plate with some filled engraving in Engrave Lab. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set select my plate size. I'll select it as six inches high. I usually like the orientation to the bottom, but sometimes to the top. I'll leave it at the top for right now. So here's my six by twelve sign. I'm going to click on my text tool. Click in the middle of the page, and I want it to be about two inches high, and I want it to be uh, no smoking. Actually, two inches high. I'm going to swipe through it and just change it to a little bit smaller, maybe a one inch, one inch letter. I'm going to press Alt K, and I'm going to align to plate and center center double click on this swipe through it one more time and I'm gonna change it to inch and a quarter now I don't particularly like this font when I'm doing mostly when I'm doing engraving I will click this down here arrow and go to my Q&E fonts and probably pick something like Gaudi regular now, Gaudi Regular already has engraving passes in it, and you don't have to do any fills to it. But there are instances that you may not be able to utilize a, a specific engraving font. So I'm going to swipe through this and pick something that is not one of my standard engraving fonts. So let's go down to all fonts, and I'll just randomly pick something let's say this is the font that that was necessary obviously this is not in my um, set of fonts so now I need to do a fill on this I'm gonna go under I have it selected I go under engrave go down to create a tool path and I need to do a fill and because this is a fairly large letter I'm gonna have to select a cutter size that's appropriate for it I'm going to pick a, about a 40 yeah. size cutter and I will click uh, color P40 and I'll show you why in just a moment mainly because it's a 40 cutter I'll use P40 and I usually like to cut in line last and here's a sweep tool down is one that I really like and just be careful never to have this at 100% because it takes a long time to fill uh, and then you have to go back and recorrect it. Usually for uh, a hatch fill, 30% is adequate. And then just say OK. Now I'm going to look at what this lettering looks like. And I can see this is quite a bit of, of fill. And if I click away, you'll see that this is the P40 color and then this is the P1 color. Now you can see it over here on the right because I had view palettes and show job palettes turned on so I can I'm going to click on this uh, tool path and go engrave edit tool path and I see that a 40 cutter I could probably go a 60 cutter and I'm going to change this to p60 so that if I go back and redo this at some other time I know what cutter size to use and this might be just a little bit too big let's see one of the things I can do if I press Alt and the letter N, I can see how the fill pattern is going to look. You can see that it doesn't catch the points as much with a 60 cutter. So I'm going to go Alt N again to turn that off. Click on my tool path, engrave, edit tool path, and I'm going to change it to a 50 cutter. I think that'll give us better results and say OK. If I go Alt N, you can see I got a little bit closer in the corners, and I think this will be okay. Now, typically, you do not want to engrave the original because, of course, if you put a 50 cutter on this, let me just draw a circle here. This would be simulate your cutter, which is a diameter of 025. So here is your cutter, and if I really zoom in down here, what will happen is, and I'm holding the Alt key to duplicate this along, if I engrave the original, 
what I end up with is a path out here that is not what I want. So in other words, this would be the fill pattern that you will see. So that is not what I want. I want only the fill and I want it to look like uh, the original artwork. So I'm going to hit F8 to zoom in on everything. So this is pretty much ready to engrave except for I only want to select the tool path. You can do that in the driver, but it is much easier to just see, you see that the tool path is 60. So I'm going to hold the Alt key down and take my mouse over here. And I want to get an A in the class, so that's why I use the Alt key. And I click on just the 60. Now the only thing that I can select is just layer 60 or just the the color 60. So I'm going to just Alt Z to bring that back where I want it. And when I go to engrave output, that's the only thing that's going to be there. If I click on this, this is my actual table size, or I can zoom in on just just the plate. And of course, just send it to the engraver and you're off to the races.